Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 12 of my 3D printed scrap metal inspired Geiger Alien Xenomorph suit, which I've got quite a long way with. Last time I worked on this neck section and getting the head mounted. And this time we're going to work on the tail, which is what most people seem to want to see in the comments that I've seen in previous videos. So first of all, I'll apologize if the lighting is a bit funny in this video. I've lost the bulb um, because the lamp fell down. So I'm, I've only got one studio light. So I'm relying on daylight, which is coming from over here, and the one light. So anyway, let's have a look at how we're going to make the tail. So of course the tail goes down here, and I've got this harness which I've uh, used to hold all the pieces on, but I need to know how heavy the tail's going to be and what's going to hold it up. I'd also like to put some animatronics in it, but we'll have to see if that's possible. So um, I'm going to build the tail before I build the rest of the back of the suit, including the dorsal tubes and the other features, so I can get an idea for the weight. Obviously 3D prints could add up to quite a bit of weight. And I want to build the tail on something flexible, so I'm using these which are um, foam pipe insulation or pipe lagging and obviously this is going to be here. Um, the, the length I think is going to be two of these which is about two meters. So I think that that um, is going to be more than long enough. I don't really want to go around in a costume with a, a tail longer than that and obviously that height is roughly the height of a person. So I think that two meters is about right. Um, and the plan is to make 3D printed sections that go over these and um, provide some structural integrity and allow me to swish the tail around. So I'd like to be able to swish the bottom of the tail round, but I want the top of the tail where it attaches um, to me to remain fairly rigid, I think, so that um, it doesn't all bend and twist around and I can keep some control over it. So I'd like to be able to flick the end or at least the second half. So I think what I'm going to do is in fact build the top of the tail out of a pair of these with some 3D printed parts between them and have these taper down and then have one of these at the bottom to make the very bottom of the tail. So if I have 3D printed parts that bridge these together it will remain quite rigid and then the bottom one will just be bendy and if I'm clever I can run some cables down these tubes uh, that then pull this thing sideways to make the animatronic parts and I think I'm going to attach those to my legs so when I take a, t a certain pose bringing one knee forward it flicks the tail round in that direction. So let's have a look at some CAD parts. Here's the first section I'm going to try and build so this obviously um, has two big ribbed holes there to take the pipe lagging or pipe insulation and it's got a kind of um, dagger shaped thing on the top there that sticks up so that'll probably face back towards the body. And then the aim is of course to align loads of these down the tail, making them progressively smaller as I go. Now we've got one other feature, which is um, a hole right there in the top of that triangular piece. And that hole there is to thread through um, probably a piece of um, Ninja Flex straight off the spool or a piece of bungee so that I can um, pull that tail up and that weight will be carried right up the back up to the shoulders so that'll give the tail um, the ability to hang in the air hopefully or at least not just drag all around the ground in a big snaky pattern. So I'm going to print these in rigid ABS. I thought quite a lot about what material would be best. Initially it seemed that Ninja Flex rubber would be the best thing to print this in so it's flexible um, but actually I think that's going to cause it to twist a lot unless I make these pieces thicker and make it 100% infill which is going to make the parts quite heavy. So I really here um, have to balance the weight of the thing with the structural integrity. So I've decided in the end that I'm going to print these in rigid ABS in quite a low density infill so they're lightweight um, and once they're glued onto the pipe lagging then that tail should stay pointing um, with the dagger sections at the top always pointing upwards and it shouldn't twist too much. So we'll get one of those printed off and we'll see how it looks. So here's the first one that I've printed. It's come out really well. Um, it's 20% solid, um, although really the only place where it put lots of infill was in this piece. Um, the rest of it, because it's quite thin, there isn't actually that much space of, for infill in between the uh, wall, the vertical shells essentially that make up the walls. So going much lower density really wouldn't have that much impact. But it's pretty lightweight and of course being ABS it's extremely rigid. So once these are glued onto the pipe laggings, which I'm also going to paint black, 
and that's going to make the tail quite rigid so you can imagine a load of those running down. Um, however I'm not very excited by the shape of it, um, the, this piece is a bit lame really so I'm going to do a slight redesign before I print the rest and we'll see if we can make something that's a bit more exciting and a bit more inspiring to be a scrap metal um, alien. All I've really done to the piece is add this extra kind of overhang piece so that we printed this way and each piece where that dagger section is has now got this sort of um, extra long piece facing upwards. Obviously the pieces are going to be aligned next to each other so they almost interlock so one comes to the back of the next piece along. I'm not quite sure what the spacing is yet but we'll sort that out when we stick them on the pipe insulation. So I think that's going to be a bit more exciting, so it's not just like sort of flat sections that don't go anywhere. But I don't think we need to make it much more complicated than that. Obviously the visual impact of having this whole tail there with these sections all the way down it um, is going to be quite good anyway. Now as the tail gets um, more tapered towards the bottom, obviously these sections need to get smaller, but we need to make sure that we don't just scale them down because obviously then the loops will get smaller, which um, we will squash the pipe lagging and we won't be able to get them on eventually. So what I've done here is the, the left hand side here I've actually cut the piece up. So I've cut this into distinct sections by cutting down the middle where these two horizontal lines are. And I've um, then basically shrunk all the pieces together, you can see the overlaps, and then moved them over here and merged them back together to make a, um, a slightly narrower one. So um, it is slightly shorter and slightly narrower because I've moved in the dagger section and I've moved the two loops together. So that's roughly 10 mil narrower and a little bit shorter. So we're gonna get some of these printed and then obviously take the left hand one, shrink it in a bit more until we get to where the loops are practically touching each other for where the two pieces of pipe insulation merge into one. So here are the first few sections. I don't know if you can tell there, but the uh third one on is basically slightly smaller so it's 10 mil smaller in this direction and obviously I need to keep adding more and more and more until this tail tapers all the way down to nothing or at least so that the tubes are next to each other then I need a special adapter piece so that my single piece uh, can be fitted onto the two so I'm going to keep printing these smaller and smaller until we get there um, and then we'll see how it goes so um, each one is taking about three hours at the moment, so it's quite a lot of printing time. And of course, as they get smaller, they should take uh, marginally less. So while I'm printing the smaller and smaller sections for the top of the tail, these are the pieces for the bottom of the tail. So the one on the left here is the adapter that takes the two pieces of pipe lagging in the top. And at the bottom, there's one. So that's going to be an interesting piece to print. I think we're going to need some support material on that one. And you'll notice there's two holes that follow down there in the bottom so that the strings can pull either side to pull the bottom of the tail to control it. And the piece on the right is the first section of the bottom of the tail, which has one big hole in the middle there for the pipe lagging. And the two holes in the side there have little inserts for the strings to go down so those can be tied all the way to the bottom of the tail so they can be pulled all the way down the tail to control it. So I'm going to get printing that on the AO101 because that piece now fits on the bed so I can have both printers going at once to get all the pieces done. Here we are again in the 3D printing room so my TAS4 is doing some more parts for R2D2. The 3 is doing a slightly smaller tail section which is the fourth section down, and the AO101, I've just kicked off doing the even smaller sections for the very end of the tail, um, basically the second thinner section. So we've got all three printers running, just in case you're interested. Here are all uh, the empty rolls of filament, or ones with very little on, and three completely empty ones. So there we go, so we'll leave that printing. And hopefully we should be able to get all the parts made for Alien in time to do all the tail sections for this week's video. This is the adapter part, which is the bridge where I've got the two bits of pipe lagging going into one. So in the end I decided rather than using loads of support material, I'd split it into two parts and I cut that in half using the slicer, which then puts both the flat parts down on the bed. So once I've printed off both of those, I'll be acetone welding it together. And those are for the two bits of pipe lagging and that's for the single one. Here are those two parts I just printed, which I printed flat on the bed like that. Obviously one of these takes the one piece of pipe lagging and this one takes two. And in fact, these get stuck together like so. So we just need to 
Stick that together with a bit of acetone, as I've done with the other parts in this series. These are ABS, so I can make a chemical weld. And then we just need to stick that onto the um, pipe lagging. So these already have quite flat bottoms because they've been on the print bed. So as usual, I'm just going to uh, use a small dab of acetone around the edge of this one. Like so. It's quite a big surface area there to stick it down with. So, And we'll just pop those together and give them a good squeeze. Try and get them aligned. That should be great. I'll just put a couple of clamps on that and leave it to set up. So here are the tail sections so far that we've got. So I've been uh, working constantly with two printers to get these done. I've got about another two days before Christmas to try and get the rest done. So we're not even 50% of the way there. We've got this piece that we've just clamped up. So let's get that. And that should be the adapter piece, which goes in here. So that's going to plug in one of those and two of those. Obviously, these will all be glued together. And we should be able to maintain the spacing. So I just need to keep printing away and making all the sections. So we've got to fill in that section, of course. And then we've got to work all the way down to the end of the tail. I think what might happen is there's going to be a pointy piece on the end, which probably will be Ninja Flex. But for now, we just try and get all these rigid pieces made. So it's a couple of days later. I'm just printing off the very last tail piece for the uh, main section. So I thought I'd have a go at designing the very tip of the tail, which is going to be one of these very similar sections again with the two holes there for um, the cord to go down. Obviously, I've blocked up the holes in the bottom here because this one is not going to be printed on its end. It's going to be printed as you see it. And the reason for that is I want to make this quite strong and I want the extrusions to go the other way so it doesn't snap. Um, this is also going to be printed in Ninja Flex, so I don't have someone's eye out. There's still a couple of sharp bits on there, so we'll have to see how those print. I think I'm going to need to print quite slow on that very end tail tip. Um, this piece is quite big. So um, that's going to be the very end of the tail that's going to just plug in on the end. And obviously these um, dagger sections all face the same way, and they face all the same way up the tail, and they're going to continue up the back. So let's get that printed off, and that should conclude all of the parts for this episode. So about halfway through the print, I'm hoping the overhang is going to be okay when it puts the top on. Uh, this is about 30% infill, so it's really quite soft rubber, so it's going to be nice and bendy. So we'll just wait for that to build up and see how it goes. It's a bit later on, it's been printing for 5 hours 20 so far. So it's working on some of those tricky overhangs, you can see it going really slow to stick the next layer of extrusion on. A couple have fallen off, but mostly they're okay. And hopefully that whole thing is gonna bridge up to make the two loops. All right, so here it is. I can't get this all in one shot without putting it really far away, but I've got all of the sections done. So it's looking pretty awesome. Obviously that piece of gray pipe lagging is gonna get painted black with black Plasti Dip, which is a brush on rubber or a spray on rubber. I think the one I've got is brush on. And um, all those sections are going to get glued on and then we can put the animatronics in which are basically going to be nylon 3D printer filaments in black which runs up the side so we can swish the tail around. And here's the uh, very end piece of the tail which I printed and that's come out pretty well. I'm not sure if it's quite big enough but it is really nice and squashy being made of Ninja Flex in about 30% infill and it looks not too bad on the outside. There's a few blips and blops that need to um, be taken off. The, in, the uh, overhang didn't work very well, there's quite a lot of um, filament that's fallen down but is basically completely um, horizontal so that's to be expected. But obviously by the time it's glued on the end there it doesn't really matter. Alright so um, it's Christmas Eve in fact and due to the sheer amount of 3D printing that's gone into this tail, uh, basically I've run out of time to do any more in this video so the next part of Alien is going to be tail part 2 which is hopefully going to be mount making a bum mount for this end and working out um, if we can string this thing up with a piece of uh, 3D printer filament along the top and the sides so we can make the animatronic actions tied to my legs. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to work out. It's feeling quite awesome. So check back for the next part. Also check out the other projects in my channel and don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. And also check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me.